for our session now, um, with a little bit introduction, it says OpenStreetMap is a collaborative mapping platform with, which provides open and easy access to its users. It has usability including the general public to government and non-governmental organization. And our speakers, who are Rabmina Pudel and Pragya Pant, will be presenting on how these, these OpenStreetMap instruments help us with the government sector, NGO, and tourism. So without much I do, I would, intro, or I would welcome Rabina Pudal and Pragya Pant to the stage. And please, before they introduce themselves, if you have any question, kindly log in into your venueless um, platform and put the questions down there. When they are done presenting, we would ask them the question for it to be answered for you. Thank you. Welcome, Rabina. Thank you, Benedicta. Uh, hello and namaste. Good, af good evening, everyone. I am Pragya Pant from Nepal. Uh, I am the op uh, OSM guru of open mapping of Asia Pacific region. I am here to present with my fellow presenter, Rabina Powell, which is also a OSM guru of the open mapping of Asia Pacific. Uh, we are representing OSM Nepal. Uh, so the title of our presentation is the OSM Spectrum, uh, versatility of OSM data across different sectors uh, and communities. So moving on, as we are gathered here today uh, for the state of the map uh, 2024, uh, I guess everyone knows what OSM is, but I will give a short overview uh, OSM stands for OpenStreetMap, which is a collaborative mapping platform. Uh, we can uh, have easy access and free access to data. We can contribute to it as well as we can download the data from OSM freely. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. So we can see this logo. Uh, this is the logo of OSM and the uh, logo of OSM Kenya. Uh, and OSM is a free uh, and open map. Uh, talking about OSM Spricta, we mean that the, we, we want to introduce you to the uh, use of OSM in different communities and different sectors. Uh, like OSM uh, use is in general public, uh, OSM used by NGOs and INGOs, uh, how OSM is used in tourism, gender equality, and academia. So uh, we are, as this is an international conference, we are trying to include the perspectives from international level as well, but we will be mainly uh, presenting you the examples of uh, Nepal, uh, as we have experience with that. Uh, OSM is um, a free mapping uh, platform, so uh, you can be from any domain. You not, need not have to be a mapper, or you need not have to be from a geospatial domain to map in OSM. So I, uh, any public uh, can map in it, and it is used also used by general public for navigation. Uh, the apps like Bato Map. Maps.me, Patao, InDrive are the apps used in Nepal, which uses the OSM data uh, and the OSM map as base map. Uh, uh, the, as the, it is uh, uh, the mapping platform, uh, pro, as, and it, any general public can map on it, so it has the local information in it. And uh, uh, having mapped uh, uh, the label, uh, um, mapped on mapped part of the world, the people from the uh, rare and um, inaccessible parts of the world feel empowered as they see them in the map. So it is also uh, helping people feel empowered and a leadership. Uh, I'm giving my own example. I am here speaking in front of you uh, because I have been working with the OSM. Uh, so we can see a picture here where uh, uh, Sorbet is uh, uh, 
collaboratively working with uh, children which are from a community. Uh, so they are helping to map uh, uh, the local uh, amenities in that map. Uh, so it is a kind of participatory mapping. So this can also be uh, done through public. And OSM is highly used in NGOs and INGOs. Uh, for disaster response and recovery uh, in Nepal, a national portal called Bipat Portal, which is um, a portal where we can uh, get the real time access to disaster. Uh, and OSM data there is used to access those places and respond to them uh, so that the response is quick and uh, fruitful. Uh, this uh, is the picture of uh, a, a project which was done under uh, Hot Micro Grant, which was mapping Chepang community. Those are Chepang, Chepang are the indigenous community of Nepal who have not been mapped earlier. Now with this project, they have been mapped uh, in the OSM. So they are uh, also uh, getting access to facilities like in the case of earthquake in Nepal, uh, they got uh, earlier and easy access to response, uh, emergency response. Uh, ISIMOT, Integrated Center for um, Mountain Development is using building footprints for disaster risk assessment. And there is a picture uh, showing, this is a map showing um, uh, a project which was done to uh, uh, do the suitability analysis of rooftop farming in one of the municipalities of uh, Nepal, uh, in which the green colored buildings are highly uh, suitable for rooftop farming in the city areas where we don't have open space where we can farm. Uh, OSM is also very useful in the tourism sector uh, as it has detailed offline maps. Uh, we can see the hiking trails, um, uh, cultural heritage sites, national parks, and wildlife preserves. Uh, there is a map called organic maps, which uses, we, in which we can have offline maps uh, used for hiking, um, riding, and navigation. Uh, so I am new to this place. Uh, I just arrived two days earlier. Uh, and I was not uh, familiar with this place. And I used this organic map uh, to get to uh, University of Nairobi, uh, where we are today, from my hotel. And uh, it allowed me to access the uh, shortest route, as well as uh, nearby amenities and uh, uh, places where I can visit. Uh, there is also um, a map called Open POI map. Uh, so in which we can filter out the data with, which we need. Like I want to visit the museum, so I can select the museum here, and only the museums nearby will be seen so that it is very easy to access for tourists. Uh, now talking this much, uh, I would like to hand over this presentation to my fellow presenter. Uh, for for the follow for further presentation, uh, thank you for hearing me. Oh, so thank you, Pragya. Now let's dive into the gender equality. Uh, so Open Street Map is Open Street Map is helping to maintain the maintain the gender equality. And as we all know, how much the OSM and HOT and the Open Mapping Hubs and the OSM community are working together to maintain the equality. Uh, and I'm also the product of the gender equality because I was the participants of the CLE Inspires and Open Mapping Champions. Uh, and uh, also, uh, mapping female-centric uh, PO, POI uh, brings visibility to the women spaces and also the um, uh, facilities that are in the world. Uh, so uh, uh, mapping female-centric POI was one of the great initiatives by the HOT and the Open Mapping Hubs during the march uh, at the time of the Women's Day, where we celebrate women. Uh, and in, uh, our, in this map, you, we can see that the red pointing the mapped area of the uh, geographical distribution of women equals to years. But it is not filled yet. We need to map more. 
Yeah, here we can see, you can see the Pragya, who is one of the open mapping, uh, open mapping mapper of the year, and I was one of the, uh, uh, I was one of, uh, one of the uh, excellent mapper also. Uh, now here you can see the SLS team of SLS and team of Nepal. And now moving on to the uh, academia, uh, Open Street Map provides a platform to many students and also our professors to develop and enhance their mapping skills through different type of trainings and uh, to, uh, through different uh, types of the uh, open source mapping. Uh, many students are um, many students can know the. Uh, Many, many students can know the importance of the open mapping. And, and, and since it is uh, open source and we can use it freely, uh, many stu students are utilizing the open mapping uh, spatial data uh, in, uh, for, for their projects. And also lots of students like us and the professors uh, have this kind of opportunities to visit the conference like this, uh, which broadens their mindset on the open street map also, uh, which will be later on taught to the other people and hence in the academic field that OSM is being extending and it limit is to countless. So here you can see that the uh, people of the Kathmandu University are providing training on the mapping road to connect the world with OSM. This is my uh, internship project where, we, uh, where I use um, open street map to uh, do the analysis of the EV, electric vehicle in Nepal. So here I am presenting the open street map also. Here you can, you can see me. So we have done the, uh, so we have done the uh, user experience survey in the Nepal. Uh, and uh, here we, you can see that the, we get the total 30 responses. Uh, and uh, most of them are uh, most of them are the beginners. Uh, most of them are the advanced mapper, and we got very uh, new. Uh, we get very new mappers also. And here we can see that the intermediate mapper and the, also the beginner mapper. Now uh, uh, here we can see that the diverse field of the uh, male and the female. And now have, uh, we have asked the question about, how, have you used OSM data in your daily life or any project? If yes, please mention. You can see that the answer, OSM data has come, uh, re come really handy to me, especially in my academic project, like as all, I already told. Uh, I, am, you, I used OSM building data in project related to the climate uh, uh, action project and also used the road data for the navigating and the best route for the transport. So OSM is being used in Nepal by the student for daily use. And uh, now uh, I, we have also asked that how can we improve the usability of OSM in Nepal. Uh, you can say that we can, e you can see that we can improve it by awaiting the people, student about the OSM and that the use that the help in our daily life. So many people in Nepal use OSM, but some of them are still unaware about it. We need to teach them. So uh, I, I want to hear you, uh, you guys. I want to hear from you guys. What's more, which ha ha we haven't included in this? What's the usability of OSM? Please, anyone? Please. Yeah, yeah. No, what? No? After, the after you can ask after the presentation. So we can di discuss this in into the question answer session also. Now, thank you. Yeah, you can ask now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please, um, both online and in person, please, if you have questions, kindly put in the chat. But unfortunately, um, for us now, there's no questions in the questions section. So please, if you have questions, you can kindly raise your hands, then yeah, you ask your questions for our speakers to answer. So yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much for your comments. It's great work that you guys are doing. And one of the questions that I had was, um, you mentioned that the Yeah. I was curious to hear your thoughts about how do you maintain that quality over time? How do you maintain it and make sure that it's accurate and it's current? Um, that question of data maintenance is 
is really interesting to me. And as the community grows and becomes more established, and you have all this data to maintain, how um, how is your community approaching that? Do you have a plan, or is it um, so? Uh, currently, we are um, the awesome uh, community in Nepal is growing, so we have a less number of contributors right now. Uh, so contributing to that Chepang community project, we went to the field and we collected the data, data to validate the, those maps remotely. Uh, so we are also giving trainings through o OSM Guru. Uh, we are, uh, Guru means a trainer, and we are uh, making more gurus by training them. And uh, we hope those communities are also touched Oh, and we have OSM Guru in each and every part of Nepal so that we have better maps. I hope answered. I answered. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, uh, complicated uh, thing as well, but we are trying. Some more questions, sir? Any more questions, please? Okay. Yes. Um, for, for the sake of the online participant, please, can you come and um, say it in the microphone so that um, yeah, they can also hear the question? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank you, both of you, young ladies, you know, mm -hmm. and also uh, came, came from Sri Lanka, Ishi region, right? So I, I'm an academic, so I'm going to ask you that, you know, academic question that I also face the uh, challenges to introduce into university, OpenStreetMap. So I wanted to ask you that question, uh, how did you manage to uh, introduce this OpenStreetMap academic into academic, right? For an example, uh, academic, uh, they will uh, think, you know, different, they have different purpose, perception, like, you know, or when I introduced you in Sri Lanka into the university, first question they ask, so what is the guarantee of this open stream map data? So who are the people contributing? So anyone, you know, can delete the open stream map data. So who will take the response? So, so many questions with that challenges I introduced to in the university now, it has grown up. So what are the challenges you face into the academic, when you introduce to this open stream of act activities into academic? Can you? So uh, we all, we the university students give the training to the people, to the new semester people, and um, ask them if you are interested, you can do more. Uh, and um, many of them are doing the, uh, doing the open, doing the digitization of the open street map because they want the free data as the uh, free data is not available. So we uh, always give the training to the new semester students who join the university and uh, uh, and uh, also told them that the uh, it is free. So they wa also want to contribute and some of them doesn't want to contribute and uh, so we just told them. It's free, you, if you want to do the volunteer, and if you want to get the free data, you can do, otherwise you can't, <laughs> so that's all. Uh, so I would like to add something. Uh, as we are from geomatics engineering yeah. background, uh, we deal with mapping, mm -hmm. and in our university, uh, we train students. Uh, it was just in our university, OSM started from two to three people during COVID-19 time and we started training others, and it is a larger group now. So we train new students, and um, uh, yes, of course, it is a volunteer work. So if they are interested, we um, let them work in other projects as well. We have a Youth Mappers chapter there, Geomatics Engineering Society. So uh, we conduct different programs there. I'm also working at the same university as a teaching assistant right now. Uh, so I do train the students uh, to use OpenStreetMap in their projects as it is free and easy to access. So we don't have licensed softwares in Nepal. Uh, we don't have easy access to them. So open data is very useful.
Hello, uh, it's always very good session, so thank you very much. But uh, you have uh, mentioned uh, ICM, uh, IC mod that uh, helped you in uh, mapping as well. So I would like to know how much uh, IC mod is involved in mapping with OSM and uh, in Nepal mapping other than OSM and what how they're contributing uh, in the mapping community and how uh, as a student or as a contrib OSM contributor you are taking communicating with IC mod about mapping. So SEMOD is actually using the data of OSM. So we were mentioning about the usability of OSM data in INGOs. Uh, so it is using the OSM data as base map. Uh, also uh, for response in, uh, there, there are many flood activities, glacial lake outburst floods. So we can also estimate the population using the OSM data and counting the buildings. So it is used to detect how the area is affected. Uh, and uh, instead of uh, contributing to it, they are using it. Hmm. Yes, that, that's, oh, thank you very much. And thank you, Pragya and Rabina yeah, for the great presentation. Yeah, we would move to our next presentation. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.